Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the A Little Less Fear podcast. I am your host for the show, Dr. Lino Martinez. Oh yeah. This meeting is being recorded. That's what the Zoom robot said. Welcome, everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. We are talking about dating. That is the topic today. And I've got my homegirl, Crystal Escoto, right here with me live, which is awesome. So um, one of the most awesomest things that I could do is record with one of my best friends. And that's because we can naturally talk about whatever is um, on the table and without any any boundaries, without any... um, hesitation just us being normal spirits um interchanging our exchanging our energy and while we do this we've got an awesome topic that i'm sure is going to include a lot of single people out there especially because of this pandemic that's finally raising its walls or no i mean you know what i mean so um yeah the subject of online dating there is um a lot of there seems to be a lot of shady and flaky people on the social media apps that are created to specifically go dating and find somebody. But it seems like a lot of the people, um, according to my friend, her experiences, and according to mine too, but this isn't about me, but it can be, it can be but yes, a lot of people are really, really fake. And um, that's the topic, fake people on the dating apps. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. So um, I'm curious, how long have you been trying the online dating thing? I think about a year now. About a year? About a year. And online dating, what does that include? I guess uh, I was naive in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'd never done it before. So it was a lot of, uh, well, I guess I could share is a little education because there's catfishing. I didn't even know what that was. Until... Cat, catfishing? Wait, I don't think I know what catfishing is either. <laughs> what? What's a catfish? What's catfishing? Well, they post pictures of someone else. And so they're portraying, you know, that they're that person, but they're not really that person, right? Um, there's that type. But there's also the other type that maybe it is them, but they're married. They're just trying to get money out of you, or they're just trying to drain you so catfishers are scammers yes okay so how do you wow so that's a lot lot of that going on huh so how do you even how do you navigate through that i mean why do you why would you even continue this social online app dating if this is what's been your experience you just keep hoping that you'll get someone that's not catfishing yeah well, I'd stop and then, yeah. you know, you eventually get lonely and it's kind of hard because of the mm-hmm. pandemic. Yeah. We haven't been able to go out. Right. So I can't meet anybody unless you come to my job. Right, right. right? Um, but I'm not going to date a coworker, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to, Which is know, a really wise idea, everybody. Don't <laughs> date a coworker. <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> yes, drama free here. Um, so it just felt natural. I guess, to find another outlet of being able to find a connection and um, somebody had said, try this app or try that app. So I tried it. Uh Um, It's not for me. I found out that I'm not tech savvy one. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) (laughs) two, I think my personality, I am very sarcastic. And some people might take my sarcasm as being rude. You mean because um, rather than meeting you in person and reading you through this other paradigm of electronic equipments that we have, they're not really seeing your true verbiage. They're taking your sarcasm as being a jerk. Yeah. I mean, because they can't see my smile. They can't can't see my body language. They can't tell, you know, they don't really know me yet, right? Mm -hmm. They only know me by whatever I happen to put on my profile if I am. Put but if in. they're already blocking you, um, blocking or 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 I, I'm assuming that. Sorry. Oh snap! <laughs> I mean, if they're um, if they're already thinking this about you that you're being sarcastic and when like in a jerk way when you're really meaning to be a good person and you're just being lighthearted, funny. yeah, being yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. Does isn't that already a detour? As and that's not the right person already. Correct. Yeah, I, mean, I would but think I mean, so. Kind of makes it easier though, right? 
I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not oh, sure I see. either. That's nice. Oh, and, that, and that's another thing we have come across where yeah. there are some good people on there. Don't get me wrong. Um, and like say mentally, we're a good match. Yeah. Right? Like we're agreeing to all the same topics. We're agreeing to what we're into and the same things mm -hmm. or willing to try different things. But then you meet them in person and physically you're not attracted oh, to them. Oh man. And so I actually had gained a relationship just over the phone, right? Your face yeah. coming into like, I knew this person. So we decided to meet in person and I just wasn't attracted to him. And I feel like you need that but wait, physical attraction and okay, mental attraction. But you still yeah. saw them on video though. Yes. But it was still different when you physically saw mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Could that be though, that you weren't fully attracted to them anyway? Because I believe mm -hmm. personally that if you do find their true identity, true spirit person mm -hmm. attractive, when you see them in person, it would be the same spark. Mm, not in my case. Okay. But it's not impossible. No, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that, that the person. Case, yeah. Yeah. So could it be that maybe you were fantasizing more than maybe you maybe, should have? Because yeah. I was already You're setting the standard a little higher rather than just keeping it there. Because I was excited. Oh, well, that maybe. makes sense. That, that that could happen. So because of that experience, I wanted to meet somebody in person faster. Okay. Because I I got hurt, and I would cry the next day at work because I missed them. Oh. So I could got used to that daily. Yeah, 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 the connection, the conversations, and, 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 and all this stuff, yeah. yeah and, the compliments, yeah, that's nice. But I mean, we were getting to know each other. So it was like, oh, how's your sister? You know, how did that work out? You know, I know her kid, this and that. Like, like you had the ball rolling. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, we're getting man. intertwined with family. You know, you're mentioning your life and yeah. who's in it. And, you know, hey, how's your friend? I heard he was sick. He just had surgery. Is he mm. cool? You know, yeah. I hope it feels better. Like I didn't trade out and tell you about that story, <laughs> but you know, there's you, you start to tell people about your life. Yeah, yeah, true. So, you know, that's you know, that's what was really hard. It was you know, I can see how that could be disappointing. Yeah, me, that's definitely just, disappointing. Oh man, so that's kind of one of the roadblocks that you've come across with, like uh, the app dating. What's another type of roadblock that you're having? Well, I kind of gave up on the online dating, but what? what I have found on, I am, and I will admit, I am addicted to TikTok. Oh, <laughs> oh, and TikTok, I've had some males that are on there and they will say, there's women telling me all the time, you're attractive, you're hot, you're this, you're that, I want to date you, can I, will you marry me? You know, there's some women out there that are saying these things to these men, yeah. but then they go in real life they go out and they shoot their shot and then they get let down yeah 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 so then like how am i i'm getting told I'm, i got this and then i go and shoot my shot and i get tucked down yeah right and my thing is when you're in real life and i don't know you and yeah. you come at me like depending on how you come at me right some people are kind of scared because you're a stranger sure right so it might be a little bit of intimidation or just maybe the experience they've past had, you know what I mean? So it's not necessarily maybe they see you as attractive. Right. Or maybe they're just like, I don't know, what is he wanting? You know what I mean? Because a lot of people are wanting booty calls only right now. They're not wanting a relationship, the <laughs> right. relationship part. Do you think so. that more booty calls have been um have been like a uh a thing now with the pandemic more than it was before? Well, I wouldn't know before. Right. Whoa, snap. I don't know before. But the current status is. Wow. I wonder if these people that are having um, fun and are good at these booty call games, you know, I wonder if they're going to lose their game power now that the, you know, people are lifting their masks. Well, now that things are opening up, um, well, at least for me, right? Like I made an excuse. I I would say I lowered my standard a little because there's nothing open for them to invite me out other than to invite me in. Yeah, I'm sorry, you lowered your standards during like, the pandemic, like, you mean? Yeah, because like- Do you think a lot of people invite, did that? Oh yeah, because how else am I gonna meet you in person unless we go out somewhere? And you can't mm -hmm. go out somewhere because everything was closed. 
So you either FaceTime, which a lot of times I did, mm -hmm. um, but then you want to meet in person. Like I said, you want to see if that attraction is there to continue this relationship. Um, and I would go over and you would either hit it off or not, depending. But I felt like their expectation because I went over was you are going to sleep with me because you came to all this way. Right. But what makes you think that was their expectation? Did they act different if you didn't give it to them? Give it, give in to them or give it to them? I mean, either one. Yeah, of course. Because mm -hmm. um that's too bad. Yeah, because there's one time I went over and nothing happened. I actually I went over and made dinner. And oh, nice. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I like to do that, but that's just me. Um, but I didn't get a call back. Right, like if we were talking every day and getting to know each other, and then after that one time, it was like there was nothing. So either he wasn't attracted to me in person, like that happened mm -hmm. with me mm -hmm. prior, um, the other way around. But you know what I mean. Yeah. But I just don't like there's no closure, and I like closure because I I hate to be ghosted. So if I don't like to be ghosted, why would I ghost others? For people that don't know what ghosted means, um, <laughs> could you explain to the audience what being ghosted means? Ghosted as in Ooh, ghost. Yes, that type. That's how this, yeah, boo. Yes. So um, could you tell our audience what ghosting means? It means that you're, you're having a conversation or starting a relationship and all of a sudden it ends for no apparent reason. And either they have blocked you on however you were communicating, if it was through, say, a dating app, uh -huh. they can delete your profile. So then now you're gone. That person is eliminated from choice of communication. Um, or if you did exchange phone numbers, um, they either could block you so they have no way of, you know, you getting to them. So they literally <laughs> become like a phantom to you. They become like a ghost. Yeah, and you don't know why. That makes so sense. You still felt like you know, maybe something was there, but you just don't want to be like. You know what? I have to say that I did a lot of ghosting um, in my 20s. You know, I'm 41 years old now and um, about 20 years ago, um, I think I did a lot of ghosting when I was dating both men and women. And I think I did it when I did it back then. That's, this was before dating apps, people. Okay, <laughs> this is in-person dating. And what I mean by ghosting, um, that term didn't exist back then, but I guess I just, um, just stopped communicating with them. That's really what it is. And I just felt like, um, I guess my young mentality, my young righteous mentality was that I didn't know anyone um anything other than what we did and if I didn't do anything harmful then what's the big deal and that's kind of like the way I had left it back in my 20s but now that I fast forward I see that that's not a good thing that pe people do deserve even just being a human being some type of explanation be just for basic respect and so um <laughs> and fast flash forward to now seven years single <laughs> This is probably one of the reasons, the, one of the reasons, because I'm being my most authentic self. And I feel that it's really important when you're dating to be your most authentic self. And that leaves you being really raw and real, really real and probably easier to get hurt. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, but I've also come across that I've had a hard time portraying um, being vulnerable. Meaning having a hard time knowing when to be vulnerable with who and then actually being that way with that person or just not knowing if it was the right timing with that person or kind of the same thing. Mm. Okay, so I'll give you my definition of vulnerable, mm -hmm. like I guess, I, I don't know. Not just sex. No, it's not. But for me, it's more like, um, somebody that I could be myself around 100%. Like, this is me. I'm not shy about my height. I'm not shy about, I've got no insecurity. This is me. Look at my light. And that, that takes a lot of courage. Yes. So to me, I don't really, I don't see it as like, um, is mostly like a feeling thing more like, oh, let me show you my soft side rather than let me show you all of me. Yes. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, but what I'm, what I'm trying to describe is what I've been encountering is men saying they want women that are not so independent. Okay, so they want to feel needed. They want to feel like- Really, you're getting this? Yes. That's interesting. Because I want to eat. The paradigm has shifted, ladies and gentlemen. 
I went out to have some drinks, you know, when this started opening up, there was a bar open. So we met up and we chatted. We were both really attracted to each other. He even told me like, you know, you know, we, we had this great connection and <clears throat> he had gone through a divorce, same with me. So we kind of just had like this really good um, communication. Good chemistry. And, yeah, that too. But he's like, can I ask you a question? Do you consider yourself independent? My answer was yes. And yeah. he says, I don't like independent women. And I said, <laughs> okay, but how am I supposed to? Mm, you should have said, I don't think you're ready for this journey. <laughs> wow. Well, like, I mean, I said I was independent because I feel like I pay my own bills. I don't count on anybody. I don't have a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I'm not looking for that. I'm not a gold digger. I'm not, you know, but I have to live my life. I have to be able to feed myself, mm -hmm. put a roof over my head, um, spoil myself. So he wanted somebody that was going to want him for resources yeah to need him to oh, wow. you know okay. and i don't know you sure. you know once I mean, you know to know different. you and you know we're sharing a space yeah you know of course i'm going to need you because hey you, you know, should have kept him around as a good friend whenever you know what i mean whenever you need a buddy <laughs> he's so communicating he ghosted me uh oh there goes the ghost so that's on him but you know what i mean uh -huh. um, I just, I was also told that that's not what independent women or that um, wording, that that's not what that means. That means I'm just saying that I'm single. Then that being single, that's what you have to do to support yourself. But I'm betraying a very strong feminine vibe that a guy feels intimidated mm. by a woman who can be who they are as myself or that guy because i think there's a lot of guys out there that like an independent woman mm -hmm. like a strong woman you know but could it, I mean, been him. it could be but i've been coming across that around you know like i said i've seen a couple of videos on tiktok where men talk about this um all ages too or yeah, like very wow, interesting. interesting yeah so What's i don't with that <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be a sugar mama you know, I would love to have a relationship where, you know, we're together, we're figuring out who's responsible yeah, for what, you know, balancing what I mean? it out together. Yeah. You know, I've worked at my job for almost over 24 years now. So, you know, I have earned, you know, the benefits of being able to, <laughs> to say retire in 10 years and That's start amazing. a new career and do maybe that intimidates guys. She's intimidating. What else are you coming across? So you're coming across um what are the catfishes? You're coming across people saying they want an independent woman. You're coming across being not attracted to them once you meet them in person. What else is it? I guess what else is a disadvantage? Are there any advantages of dating? Um, yeah, is there a positive flip side to um online dating? Hmm, currently I don't have one. And I need dating apps because I have met people that have fallen in love on like other matches. I, I don't need to name them, but you know what I mean? This is, these are, I'm talking about dating apps. As far as a dating a person. Like the little, I have little like the common ones. One. I'll go, okay, I'll give you something positive. I just thought of something that came to mind. Something positive. <laughs> I realized what I like and don't like. You hear that? She realized what she likes and she doesn't like. That's a good thing. That's wonderful. So yeah, tell what do you like and what don't you like? So I have figured out that um, there's a, a lot of men that I have found that are very, um, say, aggressive. You know what I mean? And I aggressive think, physically, like in physical or levels? Like mental. You know? Mentally aggressive? Mm -hmm. What is mentally aggressive like? trying to tell me how to think or how to dress or how to feel about myself or like trying to be a so controlling yes right like and you don't I, even know these guys not that anyone ever has the right to treat anybody like that doesn't matter if you're a man or woman you can't it doesn't matter but but yeah that's i'm just wondering uh-huh yes you know i i went on a date and um you know he was a nice guy i thought so we met and we went out to lunch 
And automatically he just started telling me, okay, you're with me, we're together. And I don't want you talking to any males, regardless friends or not, um, red flag. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a red flag. Uh, for sure. I had children, I do not. Um, and he's like, Great, I don't want kids. And um, I was like, Well, I have my three nephews who are my world, so they will be in my life. And it sounds was, like he was testing you to see how far he can go to get his way. Yeah, you know, wow. so, that's kind of scary, actually. I don't like that. That feels that does not feel comfortable at all. Sorry, you went through that. I mean, darn. <laughs> G thirteen, everybody. <laughs> you know, uh, but this stuff exists, and I really appreciate you being open about this. Like, people need to know they're not alone in these situations. That it's going on everywhere, and mm -hmm. like every day, all the time. And I found out that some okay, because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. a lot of people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm no sugar mama. Don't come at me. Um, <laughs> but asking me out does not have to have you spending any money, okay? So for me- This is a good one. We can walk around a park and get to know each other. That doesn't cost you money. That costs you your time. That costs, you know, nothing but having an interaction with me for 20 minutes, half hour, however long we've set a time for. Listen guys, you don't even have to spend money. <laughs> Listen <laughs> up. <laughs> um, one guy, uh, I went and I told him, hey, let's meet up, whatever. And he's like, yeah. He goes, what do you want to do? And I, I had known by his profile, by his pictures, that he liked to play sports. So I said, hey, let's go play some basketball with you nails. Know, <laughs> oh, oh, man, with those nails? What? <laughs> There's a lot of things I can't do with those nails. I can't even imagine playing basketball. <laughs> But we had a good time because that just shows me, are you willing to play to have fun? You know, there's some people that are spoiled sports. There's some that are, can be just mm -hmm. aggressive. In yeah, a way, you know? and he was being really aggressive when yeah. you were playing. Oh, he was, no. he was oh, cool. He was fun. We, oh, had, nice. we had a lot of fun. Uh -huh. um, he reached out to me, but he eventually told me he was married. Oh, and so they were getting the liars. I guess the liars, the scam. They were just a bottle of liars. And I mean, he played the pandemic card, right? He said, we're going to get divorced once the pandemic ends, you know? And to me, it's like, I'm, you know, I went through a divorce during the pandemic. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they're done that. You ain't doing it. Ain't going to be done. So I just, I felt like that person needed to heal. And I remember when it first happened to me, you know, you've been there to the whole thing. Like there's, there's moments where I've had to have closure or move mm -hmm. on and do different things, but I had to work on myself. Very important. You have to work on yourself because I mean, no one's going to work on yourself for yourself. This, that doesn't even make sense in the sentence. You have to do it for yourself alone. Sometimes, you know, that's when you grow the most. Yeah. If I'm drowning, how am I supposed to support someone else? So I no, I just wanted to. <laughs> um, I also had learned that I play um, <sighs> the wife card too early. I didn't even know that was a thing. So stuff, single people, the best thing about being single is that you get to learn about yourself. Yes. That's really important. Take notes, everybody. Take notes. If someone tells me, oh, yeah, I don't feel good, I'm going to come over with a get well something. Um, <laughs> <I did. laughs> um, someone told me he wasn't feeling good. I went over and made him chicken oil soup and, you know, I took care of him. He was sick. He wasn't feeling good and I felt bad. And I was told that's like a wife thing to do. And we weren't even in the dating really area so who told you though that who told you that you're doing a wife thing when you shouldn't or you shouldn't do I, that or what what when i told that? i told a co-worker oh and then i also had saw this lady that i'm i'm uh following on tiktok who said the same thing so i'm getting it from various i think i'm just being what do you call it a giver yeah but i'm just saying like someone's coming and telling me things over and over again yeah. from different areas of my life telling you're getting the same message it's that you gotta it's like putting cold water on a face that's just waking up right like wake up yeah stop it 
Stop it. Okay, so but I love to give. I love to take care of people. And but I what if you what if you break it down to them. what is it about giving? Like, what is it about the nature of giving that you like so much? And look at these things and then try to find different avenues to create that same feeling so that you're still giving, mm -hmm. but doing it in different ways. That way you don't feel like you only have to give to a mate whenever you meet them. Well, you know that, um, not all of you, but <laughs> I do that to anybody in my life. Right, like I, I did it for you today. You didn't feel good because you got your second shot. Like, um, I would do it for Al. I would do it for my good. family. I've done it for but, other workers. But I, what about serious. the boundary when you first meet someone? I mean, That's what is this? This is now. This is a whole other topic because. Now, you know That's what I mean? This is the frustrating part because it's like, okay, now you got your friends. So now I'm totally I'm stressing with you. I feel it now because it makes sense. Yeah, at what point do you give the way you give naturally mm -hmm. to somebody you just met? You know, because yeah. then that, may, that might be too much for them. Exactly. Oh my so goodness. I, the shit out of them I, yeah. I don't know. Wow. You um, probably did. That, and then that's the person that's not meant for you. Because the person that's meant for you, it's not going to be met with resistance. Maybe not in the beginning. It could be in the beginning. But I think that even if it is in the beginning, there's still an unconscious attraction. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if you're being true to yourself and there's no unconscious attraction, then later on, you know. But I want to see every side of that person to see if they're meant for me, right? So at first, I'm trying to go from mentally, are we compatible? Right, like I actually had this discussion with a girl when we were out in Vegas, and we were talking about that because she really wants kids. And I was like, "Okay, so the person you're with, um, do you guys agree of how to raise a child? Because then you're going to be in disagreement along the way, yeah. and then some. Because more <laughs> disagreements will bring on more disagreements. Yeah. So in my circumstance, you know, are you willing not to have children? You know, are you willing to adopt? Are you willing to, you know, where do you have kids? Yeah. You know, because that's uh, what I have found is so many men have children already. Oh, yeah. Especially at our age. Like once yeah. you hit your 40s, it's like everyone's got a kid. So it, like that's why I just accept it. You know, well, if I meet someone, I, just, I accept it all wholeheartedly. I'm 41. What can I do? You know, I mean, <laughs> well, I have to accept it. I met a friend on one of the apps and we're currently. Wait a minute. He's just a friend. No, 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 let's cut. Let's cut. I just said something that made me want to talk about. Uh -oh. I said, accept it. That's something that a mother probably wouldn't want to hear that, huh? Like, I don't want you to be with me accepting that I have a kid. They might be, they might think that far, right? I want yeah. you to be, to love me because I have a kid. Mm, I'm going to say because. I think you're a total package. You're accepting her as being a woman, you're accepting her for being a mother, you're accepting her for being um, your girlfriend or wife or whatever your future is, right? Because um, a male and a female or, or whatever, there are multiple identities, right? Like a mom, yeah. not just a mom, she's a woman too, right? She wants to feel sexy. She wants to be go out. She wants to feel wanted and desired. She doesn't want to be like, mommy, feed me. You know, <laughs> she doesn't want to be mommy all the time. <laughs> You gotta accept her for every yeah, um, all her different roles. And that's what I'm saying when going back to what I was about to say yeah, was sorry I cut you off. No worries, but it goes along with that. I wanna know every side. How are you when you're mad? How are you when you're sad? How are you, you gotta when... be you all the way when you're mad, show that side. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not ready to show that side, you gotta look inside to figure that out. But that's what I like about the uh, a relationship is you have this inside joke that you knew if your partner is having a bad day, you could do something, you know, and you knew that would cheer that person up for even if it was for a hot second, but at least it would turn their day around, right? Uh -huh. um, and that's another thing. I watched that movie, The Secret. Do you remember with Oprah? Yeah, <laughs> book, I read that book so many times back in the day. I remember. <laughs> well, I watched the movie just recently, and it brought up um, you actually because in, in my head because you've been studying Buddhism, right? Yes. To so to be centered, to learn about yourself, to not look so negative, right? Because you're gonna yeah. you're gonna have this 
persona or what do you call it the vibe or yeah, you're going to carry all that negative and energy then you're going to be yeah. attracting that negativity yeah. yep like attracts like and i don't want that wait so, what do you want magneted magneted back to you positivity of course you know that light that charm the humor the but but it goes even deeper though. It goes even deeper as deep as to your intentions. Like oh, even yeah. what you're thinking, not just doing with your oh, body, yeah. your speech, and your mind. Like you, if you want to attract wholesome or pureness, you really have to practice it yourself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that itty bitty part of yourself that isn't like that, that's what you're gonna attract. Yes, I agree. That's so, challenging, boss. It is, it is. And um, that's why, like I said, I have made some friends, some guy friends that, you know, that have been really cool. You know, like um, the 27 year old that I talked to, he lives all the way in South Carolina. He has some problems and we talk, I have problems, I talk to him. And, you know, he has a kid, he's a three year old, uh -huh. you know, and you know me and kids, I love him to death. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting knowing it's someone at that age, you know, and someone at my age have something in common. Sure. You know, not necessarily we're a uh, relationship, you yeah, know. There's, there's something <laughs> connecting the both of you and it isn't sexual and it isn't but, anything else other than one small thing that's like a, like magnetically pulling you together. That's awesome. Yeah. And so he got on my snap and he, he snapped <laughs> and he said, uh, you know how you get to post it. Oh, Jerry, you want snap? No. Okay. So you get to post a picture or a video or whatever, and it could be called your story and everybody, your friends with sees it. Okay. Then you can send a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation and on video or even text. But anyways, he put it on his story and he said to my number one fan and he smiled and I knew that was for me. <laughs> and I sent him a personal message with me smiling back. And I said, I'm your number one fan for everything. You know, because I know okay. how hard it is. He's working two jobs to support himself and his kid. So, you know, I am going to be there for my. So then, that is a really good benefit to dating someone online. That you, there is somebody that's genuine. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll end up marrying that person, but somehow you will have a special connection. That is awesome. Yeah. So it's overall, it's worth it. That hasn't <laughs> been my experience, but anyways. Well, that's why I said it wasn't worth it. Maybe to find a partner. But it has been um, positive in a way where I've met friends in my own circumstance, knowing I'm not That's a beautiful story. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for tuning in <laughs> to this amazing topic. Um, yeah, I'll be bringing people in uh, more to talk about this, to see how similar people's experiences are. And also, I want to hear from the men. What up, dudes? What up, men? It's from the guys. <laughs> you know, from I just want to know if they're uh, also having similar experiences on the other side. But thank you very much. This is Dr. Lino Martinez with the Little Less Fear podcast and Crystal Escanto. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll be talking soon. Blessings. Bye.